as the event ended, I grabbed a ginger ale at the refreshment bar and my ex stopped me and was asking if I was happy with the way things ended. I responded with all honesty that I was more happy. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story update. This is an update to a recent subscriber email story we just did. Um, it's the subscriber email story where he sent in a story about his friend. His friend gave him permission to tell the story in, in hopes that it could help someone. Um, so it's the story where his friend was dealing with a young lady um, and she treated him like crap. Turns out she had been cheating on him and doing all types of stuff behind his back. She would belittle him. And he was a guy who was just always down on himself. But after that, he picked himself up. His senior year in, in college, he went hard, focusing on himself, building connections and networking, got himself in shape, you know, mentally and physically and um he made it he became very successful he's traveling the world closing deals for a co startup company and doing all types of stuff and salute to that guy still um his friend who sent in his story has followed up with another email um if you guys don't remember that level up story man it's a really good one I'm going to play it first. I want you to check it out. Take a listen to it. Listen to it, man. It's a really, really good story if you're new here and you didn't catch it. But if you know what I'm talking about um, and, and you're interested in hearing his his update and follow-up, OP's update and follow-up, go ahead to the description. Click the timestamp. It'll take you straight here. That being said, let's just get straight into it. So... Subscriber story. Hi, True. Subscriber for a few years. Love what you do. I think just sharing experiences can help with being in a bad situation, whether it's growth or healing. Your channel helps people do just that. My friend said it was okay to share a story with you, hoping it would help someone who is in a similar situation. Please don't mention me or my email. Absolutely, I got you, man redemption story this is a story i have of one of my close friends and he thought it would be a good thing to share for people who feel like they made a lot of relationship mistakes and will never get to the other side of a bad situation my friend ray fake name cleared me to share his story anyway ray was a shy guy who seemed to just go with the flow of whatever came to him we went to college together and I thought maybe a more social setting would be better for his maturity and confidence. Unfortunately, Ray got stolen by his basket case of a woman who we did not see coming. Her name was Kay and she had this goody innocent Christian girl feel to her. This relation crap, as I called it, would go on for three years. Wow. She literally emasculated my buddy Ray, making him feel like crap for everything. For example, playing the victim that she couldn't go out to nicer places because he didn't have a nicer job. He worked at the college, blaming him for not being a virgin when she was, when she was one, she was hyper religious and even for having a few female friends one of which liked women and, and the other two had boyfriends. We are Asian in a predominantly Asian neighborhood. Her family comes from an esteemed background while Ray was just a child of immigrants who came over to the US in search of a better life. She seemed to take pleasure in holding that over him. Kay would go on lavish trips with her family and while Ray was making decent money and could afford to tag along, maybe once or twice, she always shut him down saying her brother and sister didn't want him around. Wow, why did he put up with her? And on about tradition and culture and faith, 
and how it meant the world to her, her family, while taking subtle digs at Ray, since he did not have a strong connection to his culture religion like she did. Kay would also break up with him a lot. She would wait until he had a final or big project and start a fight with him. See, trying to destroy him. Mm. They would break up and he would spiral and his life would wallow in the gutters for a while until she took him back. Rinse and repeat at least four times. Our friends tried to make him see sense, but he was in love. And this was his first adult girlfriend, so he couldn't look past her toxic personality. I think he saw her for what he hoped she could be, not for what she actually was. Well, eventually, one of the breakups stuck. Kay found an affluent Christian bad boy, one of those that goes to church with a good family, but also acts out when mommy and daddy aren't around. She went all over social media bragging about her good Christian man that she was going to marry and how he was a socially and culturally upstanding person. I started thinking that one day I would not see him at class, but on the news, tragically. So I took him out of his house and we had a classic boys night. Drinks, drugs, and driving. Just kidding. We went go-karting then smoked cigarettes and got drunk at one of the boys' auntie's house. Ray swore he would change from that night forward, and I was happy for him. Little did I know how serious he was being. Yeah, some people got to get beat down, you know, and to rise, you know, rise from the ashes. Redemption part. I later found out that Ray had been approached by one of Kay's ex-friends who told him that Kay had been flirting with several guys and emotionally cheating on Ray for years before she found her new man. Apparently, the whole Christian girl act was simply an act. Not surprised. This, this lit a fire under his butt of my friend Ray. He literally did nothing for our final year of college but network, study, and work out. I was a little sad to see my friend so little, but... I was in my last year of college as well, so I was grinding hard myself. Ray and I both got into a good master's program, so we kept being college buddies into our postgraduate studies. Kay got into another master's program, even though she was not very studious. The rumor is her parents pulled her parents pulled some strings. I believe it. Um, I've I've seen that done. That that's that's a real thing. <laughs> that's a real thing. Ray's networking had done wonders, and he caught the eye of a fairly successful CEO who was recruiting a bunch of young minds to head up a new business venture for his company. Ray, with a lot of work, went, went on to be the dapper and confident man that would fly around the world negotiating deals for the company. He worked for as they had gone into purchasing real estate and businesses worldwide. Ray's photos on social media are of him traveling to these scenic places on the company dime. His parents now live in a gorgeous house and are the envy of the neighborhood. Billy all duty is a big deal in this community. I gotta tell you, when I catch up with my friend and I see him smiling, I can't be prouder of him. The extra kicker is Ray went on to be a born-again Christian and a notable member of our neighborhood. He is the guy all of the older aunties wish their daughters or nieces would marry. Meanwhile, Kate is in an unhappy marriage with her good Christian man. He had been falling out with his family when they found out he had been smoking pot and hanging out with less than reputable characters. He is a wannabe Asian gangster. Kay actually bumped into Ray at our neighborhood Chinese New Year festival and tried to make his reminisce about all the good times they had together. Ray responded with, Oh, and how about all of those good times that you had behind my back? Talking to other guys. He told me she looked shocked that he knew and he just walked off into the crowd. From what I heard, she's unhappy. And her parents give her that cliche line, 
Why couldn't you marry a man like Ray? Meanwhile, Ray has never been happier with himself or his life. Ray told me to let you all know that no matter how bad things get or how bad some people can treat you, there is always a better life out there. You just have to be willing to reach out for it and claim it. He also said, don't feel bad about having, having toxic people in your life. As long as you don't let them drag you down with them, life can be a great thing. Wow, let me get my thoughts. I love this story. Salute to your buddy. Salute to your buddy. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. Recently, I've done stories where some guys were down on themselves. They they made the right decision, you know, with divorce and, you know, all that stuff and leaving a cheater, but they were a bit down on themselves. This is how you do it. He used pain as motivation and energy. Now, you can choose to be down and mope around the rest of your life. Oh, they, she treated me bad. Oh, I didn't get that type of job. Oh, they, I wasn't good enough for this. I'm just going to sit and just cry about it. And no, get the F up. Get up. That man said, you know what? I, I'm going to focus on myself. It took one year. He focused. Got through his last year, went to a master's program, worked out, made connections, probably did some internships here and it just worked his butt off. I know what that feels like and I promise you it works. I promise you when you say, you know what? Okay, it happened. Let's let's go. I can't sit and dwell on it. And you go and put that work in. And then you just see it pay off. It's lovely. It's lovely. I hope this story touches someone. Touches someone. I hope someone listening say, I needed to hear this. And they get up. And they go put that work in and focus on themselves. Forget her. She did you a favor. Time to walk away and focus on yourself. Thanks for sending in this story, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Guys, tell your buddy. I said salute to him. I'm proud of him. Don't even know him. I'm proud of that guy. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Hey, True, thanks for reading the story about my buddy, Ray. We drank a few beers and I gave him a little bit of a hard time about the mistakes he made in the past while listening to your video. Nice, that's cool. We both laughed a lot and it was all in good fun. He returned a favor and reminded me I made a fool out of myself as well. Anyways, he's encouraged me to share my own story to the best of my memory since I finally got the closure recently. How I got satisfaction. My story starts at the same time as Ray's did. The drama did not manifest at the same time as I thought I was in good as I thought I was in a good place. You know that friend who gives you advice about life because everything seems to be going his way? Well, I was guilty of being that guy. I had a decent job working as a community service coordinator while at college and I had what seemed to be a wonderful girlfriend. I was the married guy in college. You know the couple that everyone thinks is gonna tie the knot sooner or later? and has no time for partying or going crazy. Fast forward graduating college and one and a half years into my master's and planning my future when a bombshell hits. Out of nowhere, my girlfriend, Kaylee, tells me that she doesn't love me, 
that I was a good guy, but she couldn't see a future with me. She couldn't fight the feeling anymore that there were other opportunities out there besides a life with me. I was floored. I immediately was asking her if there was someone else and she said she never cheated. But there were a few people she started to think were better for her and she had to take a chance. She said she wanted a clean break to find herself before it was too late. I want to say she didn't physically cheat on me, but she moved on pretty quick. So I bet she had another guy lined up already. Oh, you know it. You know it. Looking back, I simped pretty hard for this girl. Post breakup, I sent her flowers and chocolates and even songs hoping she felt how I felt. I spent a month moping listening to love songs, ashamed to see my friends because I didn't want to let them know that my happy relationship was over. They did find out though and Ray and my other friends made sure to drag me along to as many fun public events and night outs as we could with the busy schedules we had. I will be honest, Ray told me to stop being a little B cause he couldn't see me acting so lowly over a woman who was chasing after other opportunities. I was truly grateful for Ray and my other friends to pull me up. It's life reassuring when your friends come through for you. I mean, we all expect them to, but action always speaks louder than words, absolutely. The defining point for me was the next time I saw my ex in person. I had gained a few pounds and honestly was not looking my best. I was always fit and athletic and now I was doughy and kind of sluggish. <laughs> doughy. I think a lot of people might dread seeing an ex for the first time in a while, so it was making me anxious. I knew she was going to be going to a graduation party for a friend we were both close with. When we all met up, one of her friends mentioned how well my ex-girlfriend was doing. She then looked at me and said, how have you been doing since the break? Everyone in earshot, <laughs> yo, what kind of question is that? Everyone in earshot gasped because of the way her friend said that. My ex looked me in the eyes as her friend spoke. And for a split second, I swear I could see pity in her eyes. I clenched my fist in my pocket and somehow put on a smile and lied saying, I was doing well. Then screened the room for the first person I knew and excused myself to catch up with them to get out of that situation. I left the party as my ex's new boyfriend had just stopped by and she was introducing him to everyone. After a few days of feeling sorry for myself and having friends check up on me, I realized I needed to get a better place. I threw myself into my studies and picked up a few fun video games to get my mind off the past. I eventually graduated with my masters and somehow found myself at an army reserve recruiting table where I joined up to go be an army officer. Several years later, with a lot of hard work, I now find myself a CPT in the Army Reserves, found a full-time job with the Reserves that gives me the freedom to enjoy a fulfilling life with my family. Yes, I was blessed to find a wife who, who works even though she, she comes from a fairly wealthy family and we have two kids. I have the lifestyle I always dreamed of and on days where I feel down, I think about that look of pity all the years back and smile now that I am living this good of a life. I actually did see my ex-girlfriend recently. Our college was having a get-together for alumni and I happened to go as Ray let me know that they were providing food. Plus the college is close to a few good bars we used to frequent in the past. So it was a win-win. My ex-girlfriend was there alone and from the conversation we had in the group and with some of her friends, found out she divorced with one kid. Her marriage went south because she was not satisfied with what her husband's lifestyle was like. They had a suburban life and I guess that was not enough for her. I guess it fits her. After all, knowing what I know now, she was, she was never satisfied with just being in a happy place. As the event ended, I grabbed the ginger ale 
at the refreshment bar and my ex stopped me and was asking if I was happy with the way things ended. I responded with all honesty that I was more happy than she could ever know. And this time, there was no pity in her eyes, just a look of regret. I found peace with that part of my past, something I was ashamed of. I made a great life for myself, and that was the true satisfaction I needed. If I was going to give any real advice, it would be to find really good friends. I made mistakes and sometimes dug myself into these tough spots. I could have struggled to get through alone, but my friends made sure to have that hand ready for when I fell. If you have good friends, you don't have to be afraid of making those life mistakes because you have a solid team around you to give you that boost. Also, Kaylee, I hope that ginger ale was good. It's the last good thing you will ever get from me. Good riddance. Wow, let me get my thoughts. Wow, the importance of friends. Yeah, it, it is good. Um, I can say I probably have, I, I actually, for sure, I have one friend that like I can depend on, you know, and we can go a year. We've gone a couple of years without speaking and then meet back up and it's good. You know, it's good. But, you know, it's like the only person I probably would say is like, man, I can really depend on or um, a lot of friends I grew up with. You know, you thought you were going to be friends with forever. You know, eventually, you know, they turn it back on you. They betray you. They just do some grimy stuff. Um, so it's, it is good to have friends. I'm glad you have a group of friends that you can depend on. So that's awesome. Um, and you're, you're right about that. You're absolutely right about that, man. The, like I love stories like this, man, like the real, the true, you know, you kept it, you kept it real. The last thing anybody in a relationship, if they break up with somebody, the last, you don't, you really, as much as you say, oh, I don't care about what that person thinks. What You don't want to run into an ex and be doing, and you're doing horrible or you just feel horrible. Or, it's not the best feeling because even though you said, well, I don't care what she thinks or I don't care what he thinks or whatever, if she's saying that, you do. A part of you does, you know, so you kept it real. Like, you know, I <laughs> said I got doughy. I got a little doughy and, you know, wasn't really doing too well. And I run into her and here she is, new relationship. And you just feel crappy. And her friend to ask that, how have you been after the breakup? You know, because they want to see you do bad. So no, no matter what, you did good by I'm doing great. Yeah, you're supposed to keep like I'm doing great. Things are wonderful because they want to see you doing bad. You're supposed to do bad after them, you know, um, but that bothered you because you're like, dang, you're like, why could not run into her when I was, you know, uh, you know, in my tip top shape, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, rich and wealthy and things like that. I, I completely get it. Most people are like that, even if they tell you they're not, they, they are. So yeah, dude, th this is a great story. I really enjoyed it. Um, salute to you, man. I'm glad you're happy and doing well. You said you're married. You have a family. You're happy. Salute to you. We get, I get people who write in about being married and, and they say they're happy. I have nothing against that, even though I personally don't believe in marriage. I don't. But I, I don't get, I know my, my friend I was just telling you about is married. <laughs> my friend I was just telling you about who's a close friend to me. He was my, my guy. We've been friends since high school. He's a married man. I don't go to him and talk about you're stupid for being, no, he's happy as heck. He is extremely happy for me. I can't do it. It's not for me, but, um, salute man, salute man. I really appreciate this. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you want to give some advice, you got to share something that you know can help at least one person on this channel. 
10 no stories in. Let me know what you think about this update and the original if it's the first time you heard the original. And I'll catch you guys at the next one.